So when you're talking to someone to not forget who you are? Yeah. That's the best way I can put it. Yeah. So ultimately, again, let me write this down. Who or what you are is that you are, is what you are. So when people ask like, yeah, who I am, and if we're talking about the more relative world and we're not looking for stability, we're just looking for more experience without any ground of stability, which some people like, usually we call that spirituality, um, then this doesn't matter. Like just pick whatever you want, whatever you want to identify with or believe in, just pick that concept, whether it's a unicorn or a purple legged creature in space or your uncle's lineage or Native American lineage or your body, whatever you want to choose, you can choose that concept that doesn't exist, right? But if we're talking about the stability of what's, what's really you at all times, all you need to know is that what you are, who you are, is it that you are? How do you experience that you are, are while you you're talking me? to someone? How I can don't you, know. So can you, can you maintain awareness of the fact that you exist? Make that more continuous while you're talking to someone. So I can talk to you right now and I can either get lost in descriptions and in whatever comes out of my mind, because if I have a fear blockage, then naturally I will want to control what I say to you and how it comes back to me. So I'm going to completely be lost in description. If I don't care about any of that, because I've released those fears, how do you release fears? By knowing what you are, ironically, and seeing what you're not till it dissolves as liberation, freedom. It's the fastest way to unclog your chakras. It's not to do chakra work, it's to know who you are. And that is by knowing that you are then you become better at it and better at it and you just your whole system unwinds and relax and this whole illusory nexus point of the ego knot just unties itself, unties itself naturally into the open basic state of love isness awareness which is always already here. As a result it becomes easier and easier. I can talk to you but I can maintain awareness of that I am. In fact that I am can become my predominant focus so it doesn't matter. I'm not actually speaking. This is just happening. There's an intelligence operating. I don't need to control it. If I was afraid what I said and how it would come across then I would be the person speaking and I wouldn't be able to speak so eloquently and so quickly because I would be thinking and controlling and comparing. That's awesome. Right? Yeah. So that is infinite intelligence being able to use more of the body and the mind because there is no sense of I'm a separate will in the way. There is there is the priority of love isness awareness. And so because that is the priority, I, I'd rather want to be happy than controlling. And so I'm happy and so whatever happens will happen because I don't care about that focal point. I don't care what you think of me. So then I can be happy. And since I'm happy, things flow because I'm intelligent by nature, by design. So it's a matter of disassociating, for lack of a better word, or realizing what you are, realizing, maintaining awareness that you exist while you're interacting with someone. And you could try this. Like look to a person in the room, like to your left or to your right. And if that person is occupied and the person on your right is also occupied, look at me. But have, you prefer the person in the room, right? So find a person in the room, just look at them, look them in the eyes. And if the partner to your left is not looking at you and the partner to your right is not looking at you, that really means something about how worthy and loved you are. <laughs> <laughs> so then you can look at me and get this divine dose of infinite transmission. So while you're looking them in the eye, some discomfort may arise, some old knots may arise, thoughts may arise, but can you maintain more awareness? Maintain, and you're not saying anything, it's just looking, just feeling, sensing, being aware, increasing awareness, but instead of trying to figure out who you are or how you come across, simply maintain awareness of the fact that you exist. Just that. That you are. And you can feel the shift. Either you're sort of outward projecting through the eyes and like trying to connect to them over there. Nothing wrong with that. That's a beautiful stage too. But ultimately you'll see that you can maintain awareness of the fact that you exist and then this sense of them being outside yourself starts to disappear. Oneness is realized within the heart, within being. By simply being aware that you are being. Now that you have this more locked, now that you're more locked onto it, say your name to the other person, I am, but maintain awareness that you are. Say it three times, I am, then your name, but maintain more awareness of the fact that you exist. Don't pay any priority to your name. See, so it just happened. It just, it just rolls off your tongue, but your awareness is settled in being. Some people have really long names. <laughs> 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 and 
And you can practice this, right? If you have a partner, this is great to practice. Or if you don't have a partner, your friend or a neighbor um, or a buddy. Okay, let's stop saying our names now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great practice because this really brings this out. Okay, let's stop talking now. <laughs> Everybody face me again, please. <laughs> We'll all go to chocolate tree after this so you can socialize there. <laughs> and you know what's a good practice too? Is to see how quickly you forget to practice. That's the best part. You'll be surprised. In fact, it's now. See? That's how fast it goes. You just forgot. For the past five seconds, you forgot that you exist. Uh-oh. <laughs> With more practice, it becomes more continuous and automatic. Whatever you habituate becomes effortlessly obvious to you. So. Keep noticing that you are. Don't add any definitions. Don't add any ideas. Just the very basic, fundamental, experiential, before mind fact that you are. Because even before you state, I am, you already are. No? Be there. Be in the wordless recognition, I am. And then practice this with talking more and activities and driving your car and whatever it is. And it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. It becomes this foundation and it starts to outshine the illusion of individual perceptions or beings or things. So it, now it just, all you can see is your own light. Imagine being a light. The light turns up so much that you can't see anything that you're illuminating anymore. You just see the light that illuminated them to begin with. But that's what we mean when we say the world starts to disappear. You see their substrate, you see what they're made of. You know that you, your isness, is what they're made of, and you are so inundated with that that you don't even really see a world anymore. So practice. Then what reigns supreme is love, light, awareness, bliss. And infinity, a sense of not being local. And boom, that really opens up the fears and the, if you will, energy centers. When you realize that you're not here, you are the infinite consciousness. This is just a dream. And you can't say that you're here or there or there or there. That's when those fear centers open up. And that's when expression becomes natural, effortless, and intelligent, and harmonious, and connected to the oversoul of this planet, Terry civilization. Now you become a channel slash mirror of the collective. So your vehicle is clean, so to speak. There's nobody there trying to control every little thing. You are the emanation of intelligence. Now you can really make a difference. Even though you're not really that concerned with it anymore. Because... Where's the world? There's only love, isness, awareness. But naturally it happens. Like when you're driving your car to your house and you arrive and you're like, wait, was I driving? How did I get here? It's like that. Wait, was I setting up a school to revamp spirituality worldwide? Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> if you say so. I don't experience that without words, sensations, and images. I need to create that as a dream and then believe in it, to give it meaning, to feel like, yes, I'm creating this school. That's not my experience. My experience is love isn't as awareness. And schooling happens, right? Schooling occurs, if you will. But I'm not, I'm not tying myself to that. Why would I? I feel, ooh. At some point, instantly, it feels detrimental. You can feel the sting of believing, giving meaning. Anytime you give meaning to something, no matter what it is, you give away power. When that becomes obvious to you, this sounds no longer like well, that's a meaningless, empty world. No, it becomes so real and vivid because you see evidently how every time you give meaning to a perception, you literally give your soul away. Literally. But it scares people to think of not giving anything meaning. But it's the most liberating thing from meaning to freedom. <laughs>